Hello everyone. This video will explain what a resume is, why you should have one, and how to build it. So if you don't have a resume or you've made one but you're looking for general tips, this is a video for you. So what is a resume? It is a snapshot of who you are and your personal, professional, educational, and work qualifications. You have to tell the potential employer why you are a better fit than all the other candidates. Basically, you have to sell yourself. Why do you need a resume? It is a standard part of most employment procedures. It does not only provide them with information about you, but just as importantly, it shows them that you can follow directions while being creative in your resume. And although it is not a guarantee, it will increase your chances of having an interview. Providing potential employers with information about you, including ways to contact you, would only increase the chances that they would actually reach out to you. What a resume is not, it is not your autobiography. So it is not your life story. You simply have to make sure that you put all the information that is relevant to the job you're applying for. And it does not guarantee you a job. It only helps you get an interview. So how long would an employer look at a resume for? Six seconds only. Think about this. A recruiter might have to go through anywhere from a handful of resumes to a few hundreds, if not thousands of resumes. Studies show that on average, a recruiter would only spend around six seconds looking at a resume, which makes it even more important that your resume stands out. Types of resumes. Chronological. This type is appropriate for all, and you can start it with what is stronger, your work experience or your education. This type works best when there are no gaps in employment and you always start listing your experiences with the most recent ones. Secondly, the functional resumes. Now these ones highlight skills and experiences and this type is very useful if you do have gaps in employment or unrelated job experiences. And lastly, combined, which basically is a combination of the first two types. Common resume sections, a header, objective, education, work experience, and volunteer experience. Now, of course, you can add more sections on your resume if they are, if they are relevant. Uh, for this video, we decided to uh, talk about those five sections. First off is the header. This is where you put your full name. And you have to make sure that the font size of your name is larger than the rest of your resume so it stands out. An active telephone number with a voicemail service uh, when possible. So you have to make sure that you provide your current telephone number. And if you do have a voicemail service, make sure that it is set up so that the potential employer can leave you a message if you miss their call. Thirdly, professional and active email address. So a professional email address would have your name or initials in the address, and it does not include any inappropriate or irrelevant words. Also, make sure to check the email address you provide regularly. Lastly, uh, the address, uh, your physical address where you live, basically it's just optional. Same with if you have a website or a LinkedIn account, again, it is optional to add it on your resume. So this is an example. You see the name in larger fonts, and then you have your telephone number in this format, and of course your email. Next is the objective. It is a section used to describe how you plan to develop professionally while doing the job you're applying for. And this section is usually only two to three sentences long. An example would be, a highly organized individual seeking an entry-level position possess strong interpersonal and communication skills. Another header is education. In this section, you include the degree or diplomas currently enrolled in or have finished, names of schools, and time of completion. And you always start with your most recent education and then work your way back in order. An example would be, high school diploma, 
this is a the name of the diploma, and this is the name of the school, and the time. This is the time you basically graduated. So if you're doing a chronological resume, you would be adding a work experience section. So in this section, you'd have to include the job title, the employer, and the time of employment. Um, and of course, you'd add three to five sentences to describe your role for each job. And of course, you'd have to use action verbs such as achieved or established. Action verbs strengthen your resume by describing your role better. And again, always start with your most recent experience and work back in order. An example would be customer service representative at Walmart. So you see the position here, the employer, and the time frame. And in this example, we uh, we said the person is working uh, started working in January 2019 and is still currently working. That's why we put the word present there. And when we describe what that person is doing at that role or job, we use the present tense, as you can see here. And please feel free to pause this video and um, go through these bullet points if you'd like. Now, if you are building a functional resume, uh, one header that you'd be using is skills and experiences. In this section, include key skills that are related to the job, for example, computer skills or customer service. And under each key skill, use action verbs to highlight your experience. So an example would be, this is the skill, which is customer service, and you provide examples. It could be from different jobs, but you basically provide more information on how you gained uh, that experience or what you did in that role. Reasons why a resume is not successful. One reason would be spelling and grammar mistakes. So if your resume that reflects your work is full of mistakes, it will not be successful. Make sure to always use a spelling and grammar check. It is free, so you might as well take advantage of it. Second, a second reason why a resume might not be successful is a lack of focus. So, if your resume mentions a variety of your skills, but it does not relate to the job you are applying for, the employer will lose interest. Too much information. It could be either providing too much information in general that is irrelevant or unrelated to the job you are applying for, or simply elaborating a lot about a simple point. Make sure your information is precise and straight to the point. Uh, lastly, unexplained red flags. So if you change jobs a lot during a short period of time, for example, it does not look good on a resume. General tips. Use present tense to describe what you are currently doing and past tense to talk about previous experiences. So again, if you are still currently at that position, make sure you use the present tense. Otherwise, always use the past tense. Feel free to add sections such as awards or certificates or even activities. Anything that you believe is related to the job or showcases, basically shows your uh, skills or something you excelled at. Feel free to add it. Make sure that your resume looks organized and has good spacing. So when you look at the resume, make sure that it's not off in the sense that there's not too much space in one spot and not enough space on another. And also it looks uniform. Um, now, if you do add references to your resume, make sure to let them know to expect a call. Ref uh, references could be someone, uh, professionals basically that you have worked with, perhaps your teacher. Um, and if you worked in another country, so if you've had work experiences in another country before you came to Canada, provide the city and country in the job description. Uh, if you are applying online, always send your resume in PDF. Basically, let's say if you had it in, you were writing it or creating it in a Word document, you simply click Save As and you make sure you choose PDF as a format. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. One is um, the employer might have a different version of Word or different software altogether. So when they open it, your resume might not look the same. It might not look uniform, might not look good. PDF ensures that it's saved in however exactly that you have it written. So the format will not change. And secondly, of course, it, PDF does not allow for people to make changes to your resume. 
lastly, be creative and use an attractive template. So we can go through different templates, whether it was through uh, online or even Word, um, and you'll find different templates. Feel free, to, feel free to browse and just pick the one you like. Lastly, this is an example of a resume. So we picked something with a little bit of color so it will stand out. As you can see, the name in large print, you got the email and the other contact information, the objective. This is an added section, skills. And of course, you have your experience, education, volunteer experience, honors, and awards. And as you can see, it looks uniform. Everything is in, in line. Uh, nothing looks too out of place. So again, take the time to look at your resume and just see if, if it looks good because you need it to catch the eye of the employer. And I believe this is the last slide. So I just want to say thank you all for your time. And please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you.